is good to see faces, even, even masks. I know the loveliness that lay below, below the masks. Welcome to our first service back. And this is our homecoming and our home opening. And so we welcome everyone out here today. It has been far too long. And I know we've been staying in touch and doing all the things that we need to do, but it is, it is good to be in fellowship once again. So would you read with me today's call to worship, which comes from Psalm 4. Answer me when I call, Lord, of my right hand. You gave me room when I was distressed. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. But know that the Lord has set apart the faithful for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. put gladness in my heart more than when their when their grain and wine abound. I will both lie down and sleep in peace, for you alone, O oh Lord, make me lie down in safety. Amen. Now we sing our hymn of gathering. Faith of our fathers. So you all can, can listen as the choir sings. Oh. 
so I'll try to speak up. Uh, we're not sure why it just decided to to have static. Uh, so. You want to turn it back on and see if it's gone now? No, it it was. I turned this off and it was still buzzing. Oh. So it's gone. We, I'll figure it out this week. So can, would you read with me to, or? Today, let me read the first scripture reading, which comes from Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, and it's in your bullet. Then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. The word of the Lord. And we come to our time of prayer and supplication, to our time of, of coming before the Lord. And so we pray, and so I invite you, are there any prayers that you would like for us to pray for, anyone or anything? Um, that's good. How's Michelle doing? Michelle is doing okay. I haven't talked to her this week. Did you she's talk to her this good. week? She's doing really, really well. They gave her a new apartment, and there was such a wave of love towards her that she's really overwhelmed in a good way. So yes, yeah, so she's, doing, she's doing okay, and the family's okay. It, it, it went away? It went away? Absolutely. Amen. No, no, nothing that had to be done medically at all. Amen. Praise God for miracles like that. Amen, Steve. Uh, I have an uncle, uh, David Rose. He was told that he only has a year to live last month. And an aunt, Gladys Snodgrass, who had several mini strokes a week or two ago. Or mm -hmm. About two weeks ago. Amen. So we continue to pray with them. We also continue to pray for Marianne. We, we're glad to see Jan here with us. Uh, Marianne is in rehab. She had another stroke this week, this past week. Uh, so we continue to pray with and for her. Uh, we continue to pray for Ben and his family. There was a little scare this week. Uh, his, his children are in school and one was sent home with a fever and congestion, but turns out it was just a uh, cold. So that's a good thing. And they, everyone got tested and no one else is showing symptoms. So it was just a cold. So we thank God for that. Rose? Yeah. Rose Salios. Rose Salios? Rose. So she's doing okay. I haven't gotten in contact with her in a few weeks. Uh, last time I called her, I left a message and then she called me back a couple of times after that, but she didn't answer. So she called, I picked up and I was saying hello, hello, and no one was there. So, um, but as far as I know, she's doing okay. Yeah, yeah so. Pastor, excellent. Uh, my nephew's uh, mother in law. Uh, was diagnosed with stage four cancer, mm -hmm. and she uh, decided that she did not want to go with any experimental treatment. So she has come home uh, mm -hmm. and is in hospice. So we lift her up in prayer. Her name is Kim. Kim. My nephew Chris was diagnosed last year with fourth stage kidney cancer, and it's now spread all over. And he's mm -hmm. So Bria's nephew was, was diagnosed with stage four kidney cancer, and now it's all over. It's spread all over. Gene? No, my uh, wife's ex-husband is um, uh, on a ventilator now. He, uh, he was a prolific smoker, and he um, every time he said when he came to visit for gatherings that he was going to walk out for the dog, he was out there smoking cigarettes. And Vietnam veteran, um, could be some agent art issues, but uh, mm. his he's on 80% oxygen right now, and you really, as humans, we only need 20. So his uh, vitals are going down, mm. and I basically, as a Cherokee Indian, said you have to, not white light, but gold light and blue light. Gold light for healing, blue light for healing, and the hope is in that state in mind, because he won't last much longer, is that God will be there, even though his vital signs is not able to communicate. So. For anybody that's had to deal with these sort of things, um, you know, blessings and strength, and that's all we can ask for. Mm -hmm. He was, I believe, it was him that was involved. At, he was playing the piano for the 
for the Welsh choir when they gave their concert here. Oh, really? Yeah, he was oh, here. Was... Love it. Karen? I just want to rejoice that we're all here today. Amen. And it's good to see everyone in the, the weather has... Has held off. Held off. It's okay. That's prayer. Prayer and supplication has held off and <laughs> kept it. Um, lifting up Maggie. Maggie is Ellie's mom. Uh, she was... She's struggling with some health, very serious health issues. She was di just discharged from the hospital um, Friday. So praying for Maggie's healing and Ellie. There's a lot of adjustment with having her mom in that condition. Amen. Well, Bob Pittman, know? he's going to the hospital. He's rehab. in rehab. Yeah. Bob Pittman's in rehab. Uh, I haven't been able to get in contact with him this week. Um, his friend, who's his uh, emergency contact, called me, and so he didn't have his phone on him when he had the accident. For those who didn't know, Bob Pittman was riding his bike, and it started to rain, and he fell, and he broke his hip, so he had oh. hip surgery. And so we, I called him at the hospital, but he doesn't have his phone with him, so I don't know how to contact him. So I was, I've been trying to get in contact with his friend to see if I can get his number for the rehab. So, but last a couple weeks ago, when I talked to him, he was he was okay after surgery, and he was heading over to rehab for a couple weeks. So, Cece, now you got to talk up. I can't hear you. So we thank God that Cece had a good morning. Thank you for sharing all of your details. <laughs> it's good to see you. And it's good to be back all together, isn't it? Uh, we're, we're together but distant, and I guess it's okay, right? Uh, it's much better than just, see, just being together digitally. Where, where you just see me and the choir. <laughs> so well, let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this day and for this time, for this moment and this opportunity, for this gathering, Lord, that has been long anticipated and long waited for, Jesus. Lord, at this time, we worship you with all of who and what we are. Lord, we lift up all of our petitions and all of the things that are in our hearts and minds, all of the people, all of our friends and family who are struggling, Lord. We lift them up before you. Lord, we ask that your spirit would be with them. We pray for all of those who are struggling with illness, with cancer, Lord, and we lift them up at this moment in time and ask that your healing hand would be upon them and that you, Lord, would be their guide and their strength on this journey, that you would walk with the family, Lord, as they all work together to find wholeness and healing once again. We thank you for the miracles you have done, and we ask, Lord, that you continue to be Lord in our lives. Lord, we give you all honor and all glory and thank you for this opportunity of gathering. Lord, we thank you for the safety net that you have put over us as a church, Lord, and how you have kept so many of our individuals safe in all of our church, Lord. We give you all, all honor, Lord, and all glory and we worship you with all of our hearts, Lord Jesus. Lord, we pray now that you would continue to be Lord in each and every one of our hearts, each and every one of our minds, and be the center of our congregation. Lord, we ask and pray that you would help us to live out the gospel in a very real way. In a very real way, Lord, where we can share light in the midst of darkness and be encouragement in the midst of the discouraging. Help us to bring hope to those who are hopeless, Lord. Lord, we give you and praise you with all of who and what we are. We thank you, Lord, and we pray all of this in Jesus' name. And now let us pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. 
Amen. Amen. And uh, we normally at this time we have our offering, but we have uh, a jar on the table where you can put your offerings. Uh, we won't have somebody go out. And also for the passing of the peace, we encourage you to turn and wave to each other. As we, <laughs> as, <laughs> as you know, as things are different now, we have to make sure we stay safe. And so we encourage you to wave. <sighs> with all with all the technology and everything we have, it always comes down to electricity. <laughs> is it plugged in? Uh, well, it is plugged in, but it tripped. See, it, it reminds it reminds me of the of the joke that says, or you know, the computer said how how it was the best thing that has ever been created, and the TV said, no, 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 I'm the greatest thing that's ever been created. And then electricity said, oh yeah, you think you're important? <laughs> and so we come to our time of announcements. Uh, this Tuesday, we have a leadership meeting. Uh, we have agreed that today we were going to have service, but we were going to meet this week to see how it all went and evaluate it. And then we'll, we'll let you know if we're going to continue this. Uh, as of right now, how do you all feel about being here today? Have, do you feel like safe enough and we're trying to make sure everyone is, is feeling comfortable. Uh, we know outside we'll be, we could be out here for a couple more weeks, maybe even a month. But after that, uh, we're working on other things to be inside. Uh, when we do come back inside, we're going to be in Scott Hall. And we will have precautions there with the seats scattered. And we're going to have a plexiglass in front of the choir so then they can sing and not spread germs. Um, so we're going to we're going to keep trying to improve the safety and also how you feel safe within the confines of service. So any other announcements? Yeah, I just want to mention um, the incredible role the pastor has played um, here at the church with the coronavirus and then eventually the choir coming in. And it was just amazing the transformation of being able to get together again and start singing and, and talk. But this Angel's incredible effort to work with the technology and whatever it was needed to be able to convey the messages out there, and uh, obviously the messages sent during the week through his role, an incredible role and very important. And um, I'm impressed because I'm terrible with technology, but um, it, uh, we, we appreciate it very, very much. Amen. If I may, just one other thing. Uh, for the last year and a half, I've been trying to work with the community of Chester, Chester, PA, about doing restoration on a colonial cemetery there. And um, recently we received permission, and I'm going to be working with a gentleman named um, Jamar Daniels, and he is with a program called Imanji. And besides working with the community of Chester, if you know the story of it, 1696 board, incredible stories, ups and downs in economics and changes and challenges, but the opportunity to work with youth, and a lot of these youth have parents who are incarcerated. Um, so we're hoping to use it as a spotlight, trying to get some funding from some local banks. Crozier Medical is going to come in and act as a uh, mentor to work with these students about history. Um, Pastor, again, graciously has said that he would be glad to come uh, to help interface with sections of the community that um, would be important because it's a diverse community down there and then another project in Wilmington. So I think outreach of the mission of, of this church, and I'm not a member here, but I, I feel very much a part of the family, there's a great opportunity to do things that will have an impact in an area that very much needs attention and a lot of people out there I think are looking and want success stories. So this is something uh, we'll keep you informed with, but um, all good and it takes a lot of prayer for this to come about. and. I don't take any of that for granted, as I shared with many of you. Thank you. Yes, um, choir practice, 4 o'clock on Thursdays, so yes. anyone who's available. And so, also, um, we would like to have some people to help set up on Sunday mornings and at the end of the service, take down. So anyone who's available, come a little bit early and set up chairs and just help get things together. Yes. Service is at 10.30, so 10 o'clock, helpers. So 9.30 to help set up. Yeah. Uh, that would be very nice. And again, Thursday at 4, we practice as a choir. And so I encourage you, if you want to sing, if you think you're a singer, if you know you're a singer, please come by and we'll, we'll all work it out together. 
Uh, yes, and we do we do social distance. So, any anyone else? Any other? A word of thanks for Gene how he helped down at the parsonage when you had that water problem. Yes, thank you, Gene. Great, great help. Thank Gene you. did a great job of cleaning up the basement. <laughs> Uh, after uh, we had that storm that I was expecting a boat with two of every animal to go by because <laughs> it was it just came down for like hours uh, we had a little incident in the basement of the parsonage uh, and Gene came by the, the hero of the hour and vacuumed up uh, with his uh, shop vac all of the water that that just was it was about two inches of water in the basement so if I could just add to that the, the interesting thing was that the power gave out, and I was in my library, which I love, surrounded by books, and um, literally the rain was going sideways, and the amount of trees that were going down all around this church was incredible, and I, wanted, and I heard the pastor was down at his house, and so I came out, and the trees, you could hear snapping and things like that, and I've been in a tornado before, so I was running down the hill, jumping between these trees to get down there. Mm -hmm. And um, that rain literally was going sideways. And when, when the insurance company came out, I showed him the parsonage house and it was like pepper shot all over the wall. And he said, I've never seen anything like this. So the amount of water was incredible, but I really felt somebody was watching over us because everything around this church was coming down and these big trees stood. So um, stood. <laughs> it's all good. They did. In a reasonable they extent. <laughs> And we've done, we've taken precautions now at the parsonage. We put a cover over the window in the basement. Part of what happened is that the water built up so much that the window actually opened and it let in all that water, uh, which, is, which is amazing because there's also a fire extinguisher that's on the windowsill that holds the window also, and it just blew it away. And it's, it was like a, a waterfall coming in. But thank God uh, we got it cleaned up and dried up, and now we've taken all precautions for it. So, um, are there any other announcements that were good? Oh, I also encourage you all to to watch. Uh, I don't know if you if you've gotten the emails, uh, scripture picture. We're reading uh, the Gospel of John. Uh, as I said uh, in the first video, uh, quite often we do take moments to pray and meditate. But what suffers is our reading of scripture. And so I encourage you to listen to the chapter a day, so it helps to build up that spiritual life and to build up. The knowledge of the scriptures that we believe in uh, for our faith is more than just a feeling it's a solid foundation that's built on scripture and prayer and meditation and fellowship and community now, all of these things together create the foundation that is our christian faith so i encourage you to to watch that and so now let us sing our hymn of celebration Do we have this... Bible study that starts on Wednesday? yes thank you uh, this Wednesday, we will be starting our Bible studies once again. We're going to continue in the book of Acts uh, until probably the end of the year. Uh, it will be via Zoom, so I will send out the email, and you'll, get the, you'll be able to connect and to be together with the, crew, with the group on Wednesday at 7 o'clock. I'll send out the email earlier in the day on Wednesday so we can get together to, to pray together and also to study together. And so, thank you, Ms. Pat. And so now let us sing our hymn of celebration. Um, this is This is My Father's World. This is my father's world, and to my listening ears, all nature sings around me rings the music of the spheres. This my father's will, I rest me in the thought of rocks and trees and skies and seas, his hand the wonders wrought. This is my father's world, the birds that carols raise, the morning light, the living. Father's 
text comes from the Gospel of John chapter 20 verses 19 through 23 John chapter 20 verses 19 through 23 then the same day at evening being the first day of the week when the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled they were afraid of the Jews Jesus came and stood in their midst and said peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands, and he showed them his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. So Jesus said to them again, Peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The word of the Lord. He breathed on them the Holy Spirit. This is a callback to our first reading of Genesis when God formed humanity and then breathed life into them. Jesus who had just gone through such a terrible ordeal. His disciples who were still recovering from what had just happened. This is just after his death and resurrection. They're afraid of what's coming. They're afraid of the, the authorities that are gonna come for them. And now they are in this room, the upper room, hidden, holding, being. And suddenly Jesus appears and breathes new life into them. The breath of life, the Holy Spirit. And I think that the Holy Spirit is the most important key, especially in this text, because it is the Holy Spirit that is here with us today. It is the Holy Spirit that has guided us. It is the Holy Spirit that inspires us. And it's also, it's a funny thing talking about the breath of life now as we have to wear our masks and we have to be careful where we breathe and how much we're breathing in from others. In this time, in this world, where we're struggling to breathe freely. God reminds us that God is the breath of life. The Holy Spirit is the wind of God, the breath of God, the very thing that gives us life, the very thing that provides us with the sustenance that we need that goes beyond the physical, but fills us in a spiritual way fills us in a way where we're able to do what God has called us to, where we're feeling inspired to encourage others, where regardless of how much we're struggling or what life is throwing our way, we are able to see that we can push through. That's the spirit within. That's the spirit of God that has come into us, the spirit of God that is around us, the spirit of God that encourages us. It's that spirit that wakes us up in the middle of the night when we don't know why, when things may be on our mind and we wake up and God comforts us. It's the spirit that's there. When we wake up and pray for someone because randomly the someone comes into our minds, it's the spirit of God that is encouraging us to pray for them. When we feel something is not right, when our gut tells us that something may be off. It's the Spirit of God that is within us, helping us to understand things that we may not understand. And the truth is we may never understand it, but those are godly things that God helps us to do. And so today we are reminded that the breath of God, the wind of God surrounds us. And here Jesus, after dying on a cross, after being whipped, after being humiliated, had resurrected and now appears before the disciples. 
he appears in a place where the door was locked. It specifically says they were in a locked room. No one could enter. They were afraid of the authorities coming in. They were afraid of who might want to come in and take them. So they were locked in a room. Like some of us, we lock ourselves away from God. We try to run. We try to hide. We try to be apart. We try to push away. But like Jesus to his disciples, when we least expect it, when we think we've ran far enough, Jesus is there, the Spirit is there and says, peace be with you. When we think we've hidden ourselves, when we think we've run to the ends of the earth, of our earth, whatever that may be, when we've locked our heart away and think that no one can come near, the Spirit appears, Jesus comes to you and says, peace be with you. You cannot lock God out of your heart. You cannot lock God out of your life. You cannot run far because the Spirit is always with us. The Spirit of the Lord is what encourages and helps us. The Spirit of the Lord is what is with us in the midst of those dark valleys. When we're trying to run, it's actually the Spirit of God that's helping us when we think we're running, when we think we're hiding. God is still there. God is still present. So I remind you of that as we are at the hopefully towards the end of this quarantine for we don't know what the future holds. We don't know what tomorrow may hold and we pray that maybe life can find some semblance of normalcy once again whether we do or we don't. Whether we stay together in fellowship or we have to go back into quarantine I remind you that you are never alone. The Spirit of God is with you always. The Spirit of the Lord is with you when you think you are at your loneliest and lowest point. The Spirit of the Lord is who guides you, who encourages you. The Spirit of the Lord is the spark in the midst of your darkness that lights the way. Because even a little bit of light chases away darkness. You don't need floodlights to chase away darkness. You can have a candle because darkness can never overcome light. And the light of the Lord that is within you shines even if it's just a spark. And it chases whatever darkness you may have or be surrounded by away. So I encourage you today and I remind you today to breathe in the breath of life. To breathe in the Spirit of God. To breathe in the Spirit that Jesus breathed unto the, His disciples. Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I send you. Then he breathed on them. And the Spirit of the Lord descended upon them. And they were filled. That same Spirit abides here with us today. That same Spirit is here with you right now. That same Spirit continues to be with you. So I encourage you now to breathe in the Spirit of God and let the will of God be done in your life, in every situation, and in every moment. Amen. Now let us sing our hymn of response. Breathe on me, breath of God.
not the first Sunday of the month, it is our first Sunday back. Our homecoming and our home opening. So for those who have never used one of these, you take the plastic off the top first for the bread. <laughs> There's two sections. And so on that, on that day, before he was taken, Jesus and said to his disciples, do this in remembrance of me. Then he shared that bread with his disciples. Let us partake. And now we take off the second aluminum layer Then after supper, he took the cup and said, this is my blood that is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he shared it with his disciples. Would you pray with me? Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to remember what you did for us. We thank you, Lord, for this moment, this most sacred moment of remembering that you gave your body, you gave all of yourself because you loved us. And Lord, now we pray and ask that you would please forgive us our sins and our stumbles and help us to not only partake as a symbol, but to live out the love that you showed us. Lord, thank you for the blood that was shed. Thank you for your body that was given. Thank you for loving us, even when we feel we don't deserve love. Thank you, Lord, for your love continues to abound even to this day. And now we ask, Lord, that you would help guide us on the journey to come. We pray this in your holy and precious name. Amen. I know we normally hold hands and sing, Blessed Be the Tie, but I invite you to stand and, and we will sing, Blessed Be the Tie that binds. Amen. Let us pray before we go. Lord, we thank you for this day and this time, this gathering, this coming together once again. Lord, we ask that you would help us to make the right choices and to keep us safe in the midst of all that's happening in this world. We pray now that you would take us to our destination safely and may this week be truly a week of standing on holy ground. We pray this in your holy and precious name. Amen. Blessings it's going to, to be all. a little blue Peace be with you. Pub.